Welcome to A Therapist, The Buddhist, and You. My name is Luke Dubois. I am the therapist. I'm here with the Buddhist, Zomo, and we're glad to have you with us. All right, let's get into it. So I've done this, I think, one other previous episode, and we're well more than a handful of, of episodes in our podcast, and I want to talk about our handshake agreement we have with you listeners. We're fortunate enough now that we're on podcast platform and we've recently started to do some video. So glad to have you guys with us. Um, if you listen to more, I say than more than three episodes, three episodes, we'd like you guys to like, comment, share, subscribe, plus heart, depending on what platform you're on. And I call that our contractor handshake agreement. We're hopefully providing the listeners with engaging, entertaining, valuable for their health and wellness um, overall well-being. And if you like it, please like and comment. That would mean a lot to us. So good to go? Yeah. All right. Sounds good. So with that said, I want to talk about a uh, an interesting topic that might seem a little cringy to some, freeing to others. And that topic is is one word, and that word is forgiveness. Hmm. Once again, we talk about a collective solution to health and wellness. And I think that word is a very healing word and it's very important to peace, freedom, mm. sanity, and serenity. What do you think? Yeah. To forgive and to be forgiven. I think it's easy to be forgiven. You know, that sounds really free, but also I think it can be as equally or even more free to forgive somebody. I'm curious uh, yeah, I'm curious how this conversation is going to unfold. Well, I got some ideas. It's, uh, I think it's one of those words in therapy that is, whether it's directly or indirectly covered, because it, it leads to a lot of healing when forgiveness happens. I think one of the reasons why forgiveness is so tough and can't seem even like a possibility to some people based on what they've been through or, or what they've had happen to them is because we have a hard time identifying what it actually is and is not. I'll give you, I call it a working definition of forgiveness, but I want to throw it to you and, and the listeners. Um, I want to hear from you first. So how would you define forgiveness? Yeah, I mean, I immediately think of my native language, which is not English. So we have a wording in Burmese, uh, which I haven't thought about in a while. But it has a sense of like releasing or letting go to not to hold on to tightly is to forgive. That's the first thought that comes to mind about the word forgive, to let go, to release, you know, to unburden in a way. That's my first reaction to that word. Mm. I think you're onto something with my, uh, I call it my, I call it my working definition of forgiveness because it doesn't have to be black and white. Um, I want to cliff hang before I give my working definition. Let's talk about what forgiveness is not. Sometimes that can help us understand what it is when we can identify, let's rule, rule out what it, what it isn't. To me, forgiveness does not mean surrendering the right to injustices. What do you think? Hmm. You spend more on that. Surrender, so not standing up for the truth, that yeah. being passive, yep. suppressing yep. the truth. To me, forgiveness is not uh, putting up with intoler an intolerable behavior. Meaning, if I'm forgiving, which sometimes people come to therapy or uh, talk about if if I'm forgiving, then I I don't want to become the doormat. I don't want to continue to be hurt. Mm -hmm. Excellent, because I don't think that's forgiveness. I think boundaries are very important when it comes to forgiving. If someone's hurting me, it, I I often give the example if if I were to come up to you and dab you up, hey Zo, what's going on? I kick you in the shin, and I say I am sorry. I'm please forgive me. You may forgive me. So the next day I come to you and I go, oh, my man, come up to you, hug you, and wham, kick you in the shin. 
I might start crying and I say, please, please forgive. You might forgive me again. But on that third day, what are you going to do? I'll just punch you first. <laughs> <laughs> Forget forgiveness. I, I'm going to create a, 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 either a boundary or a, wait a minute. I, I might let go of, of what you did the previous days, but I'm not setting myself up for further hurt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's really important. Mm. Forgiving is not, we hear this all this, all the time. Forgive is to forget. I don't know about you, but there's a lot of things that have happened to me that I may have forgiven. And we'll talk about the definition potentially with the definition, but I certainly haven't forgot about it. If that is a definition that that's going to be, hard for me to come to peace with hmm. some, some of the little things we might forget, but the big things, eh, what do you think about that? Forgetting and forgiving. Yeah. Yeah. I will uh, save this for later, but um, maybe yet yeah, towards the later, like the difference between the actor and the action, you know, okay. maybe we can get uh, deep into it because um, that that's, um, I don't know if that's entirely a Buddhist concept, but I, I learned that in my recovery journey too. I don't have to forgive the action, but what I'm forgiving is the actor who is a changing person. Mm -hmm. That person did that out of unskillful or based on the limited information that that person have. I don't need to forget the action that was taken against me. You know, mm -hmm. The action doesn't need to be forgiven, but what I'm forgiving is yeah. the person who did that. I am not condoning their actions or behaviors. Mm -hmm. I'm not excusing their actions or behaviors. And maybe I'll, we'll go back to, to me, my working definition of forgiveness is, and you said this pretty well, of letting go. And I think the one thing to truly forgive that I'm letting go of is the hurt that comes with it. Mm -hmm. If I'm forgiving someone, something, I'm letting go of the hurt. Yeah. Yeah, it's really interesting, right? Because when you forgive, it makes it seem like it's about the other person, but it actually you're... It's for yourself. It's like you're letting go of that poison, you know, unnecessary suffering. I do not need another person to to forgive. That's reconciliation. So it would be nice if I could reconcile with someone, but that's not forgiveness. I don't need someone else. I don't have to give someone else my power to let go of the hurt. That's a reconciliation, meaning... I forgive you, you forgive me, I apologize, you apologize. That's that's wonderful. And a lot of people want that and are confusing that with letting go of the hurt. Just takes you. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Okay. So if forgiveness doesn't if forgiveness does not mean forgetting, um I think forgiveness when it happens, when we actually let go of the hurt, it changes the way we remember the thing that happened. You know what I mean by that? The storytelling is different. The narrative is different. Why? Hey, listeners. We've got something extraordinary to share. A chance to reshape your journey no matter where you are. You're familiar with Zal Mall's insights on our podcast, but there's more. Through the Recovery Collective, he offers life, mindfulness, recovery coaching, and meditation groups guiding you toward a fulfilled and mindful existence, no matter your location. Zal's journey from a Burmese Buddhist novice to a skilled practitioner equips him with timeless wisdom and contemporary strategies. Whether you're navigating life's shifts, seeking clarity, or pursuing self-awareness, Zal's coaching serves as a compass guiding you toward success. The best part? Zal's approach centers on your growth and empowerment. He equips you with tools to tap into your inner strengths for continuous evolution no matter where you are. Ready to take that next step in your personal growth journey? Connect with Zal Mall and the Recovery Collective at 240-813-8135 from anywhere in the world. Investigating in your journey reaps immeasurable rewards. Let Zal Mall guide you toward resilience, clarity, and empowerment no matter where life finds you. Now, let's transition back into our conversation. Stay tuned, stay curious, and keep your journey growing. Why do you think the narrative is different if I let go of the hurt? I don't know. Like Not being able to let go for me has a lot to do with selfishness, you know, hmm. that I just see everything from my limited, very selfish, self-centered world. Hmm. But when I forgive, the doors open and I start seeing the story 
from other angles. So this where uh, some of our listeners might get resentful at you. <laughs> and what I mean by that is, well, that sure is a Buddhist way of looking at things. <laughs> so expand more on that in terms of part of your Buddhist principles and your belief system. How do you let go of suffering and let go of some of the hurt that you've gone through in your life? If we look at the definition, that's letting go of the hurt. How do you forgive some of the things that you have happened to you or you've done in your life? Put yeah. you on the spot, by the way. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I'll just share my experience, you know. Like, it is it is not, I wouldn't ask you too, like, why is forgiveness so difficult to forgive? Because I've held on to a lot of resentment, you know, uh, in my life. But at the same time, um, it's so freeing to forgive. It, it is a process, though. It's not like, oh, now I have forgiven and we're good, you know, but it ha it is like a consistent effort. For me, what it comes down to uh, is that I have been practicing self-forgiveness as well, which is also a really big um, task to be done. But uh, what is helpful is that people are, people are, <laughs> people have human mind, which means it is limited. So when somebody does something, he is doing that based on all the limited information that that person has in that moment. It can be my parents, it can be my teacher, you know, whatever it may be, they did their best in that given moment. So when I accept that, it's uh, not much of a further step, but like a really baby step that I can have a glimpse of forgiveness, that everybody mm -hmm. did their best and I did my best and I can be forgiven. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. I think of some extreme examples of, I don't know what number of mass shootings we are, whether it's in schools, if we're in churches and movie theaters, music events. And I remember a couple of year, years ago of listening to these women of all ages and their husbands and their children and their grandchildren were shot and murdered and listening to the audio of these women uh, saying to the, the shooter, I forgive you. And it just hit my heart like, wow, At them letting go of the hurt. They're not condoning. They're not excusing. They're not minimizing this, this individual's actions, but to be able to let go of, of the hurt of, of anger towards him was so, I'll say spiritually, powerful to me to see someone else having the ability to do that. I just couldn't fathom just listening to it. And I listened to it like two or three times hearing these multiple individuals telling this shooter, I forgive you. And looking at this definition of, I am no longer allowing you to hurt me with anger. Mm -hmm. And in some ways when we forgive, it changes the way we remember. And another way I say it, and I wrote, I wrote this down, we no longer have to experience ourselves as the victim of events we had no control over. Mm. That's a powerful statement that I no longer have to experience ourselves as me being the victim of events that I had no control over. Well, that's unbelievable acceptance, but it's also a level of changing how we remember it. And, and, how many times in my life when I'm in pain, my expectations aren't met, my my desire is not met, or my fear happened, then all of a sudden I have, like you said, a resentment. And a resentment is me re-feeling a discomfort, an irritation, an anger, whatever it might be, and I hold on to that, that feeling that I continue to re-feel. Mm -hmm. It literally comes from the Latin word sentir, to re-feel. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I'm refilling a hurt. So letting go of that hurt, wow, that's just freeing. Easier said than done, but freeing. It's also something that you cannot pretend about, you know, <laughs> because I've tried that. <laughs> Minimizing, right? Yeah. I, I'll try to minimize it. I'll try to downplay it, push it away. Because it comes from somewhere else. So I cannot force myself to forgive somebody. It has to... Because when I forgive somebody too, I again, the opening of the door is like I open up to something unlimited. Mm -hmm. So for me to be able to forgive, it doesn't have to be like, oh yeah, I forgive you. And then pretend as if I forgive. 
is not something that is humanly possible for me to make that happen by myself. But I have to like open up to the unlimited love in a way. Okay. Well, let's. How do we do that? How do we let go of the hurt? And you say open up to that unlimited love, which. Uh, I'll say this, that sometimes it takes something greater than ourselves to actually let go of the hurt. Mm -hmm. You got any uh, Buddhist principles that allow us to do that? <laughs> I'll talk about some, some therapy techniques, but uh, um, that's a hard one to, to not, I think of in, in a Buddhist perspective. And I don't know if you've told me this directly, Suffering is inevitable. We have a whole episode on suffering. And what I try to get better at is not hold on to that suffering and not create more suffering than is needed. <laughs> because I've got enough pain or suffering or discomfort that happens in my life that I certainly don't want to add to it. <laughs> I've, heard, I've uh, heard you say that to me in, in the past. But what do you think of that? Yeah, it all comes to actions, right? Like my, if I'm feeling unhappiness right now, it's as a result of unskillful actions that I've taken in the past. But at the same time, I'm not powerless over it because this present moment is real and I can take actions for further happiness or to kind of reverse or reduce that this unhappiness that I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. So if I put my mind to it, um, forgiveness is about, I don't want to add any more suffering to there already is. But then it comes from surrendering to the fact that, oh, it has already happened, but what okay. can I do now to not to let that happen again or to, you know, hopefully reverse it too in a way, you know, some kind of amends in a way that how can I make up for it? So, yeah, I, I don't know. It's kind of a cliche thing to say, but being fully present in the moment is how we can forgive. Hmm. Yeah, to to let go of, of hurt and all aspects of my being from my heart and mind <laughs> to let go of a hurt. I think, yes, it takes time. And I, and I give the analogy of an onion. There's been many a times in my life that I felt like I've got over uh, a, a resentment, a hurt, and I've forgiven that person. And then I've realized it's like an, it's like layers. Oh, the hurt isn't as intense, and and I've done some more therapeutic work, um, resentment work, spiritual work, and then another layer of hurt goes and goes, and 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 very rarely is my deep hurts just gone, let go like that. I mean, there's there's certainly been some cases of that, but I think it takes a lot of spiritual surgery to let go of a hurt. Mm -hmm. When when you hear me say spiritual surgery, what comes to your mind when it comes to forgiveness? Yeah, some kind of soul searching in a way, really going to the, really like embracing or facing, you know, the hurt and the fears and whatever comes along with that resentment, you know, really looking into it. That's what strikes me as spiritual surgery. Um, yeah, digging deep. If I had the power to just let go things like that, then maybe I would be Buddha. <laughs> maybe I would be Gandhi. Maybe I'd be Mother Teresa. Maybe I'd be a lot of these wonderful um, spiritual leaders in our in our world. Uh, but I ain't that. <laughs> uh, so this, and I use the word spiritual because I don't know what other word to use that can give me a, a power to not stay in the stuck and the suck of pain that I no longer want to feel. One thing that I can be good at is justified resentment or justifiable anger. Well, damn it, that person wronged me, so I've got every reason to feel hurt. And there's some truth to that, but I still have that refeeling of hurt and resentment, and that's not serving me either. Mm -hmm. So some of those that needing something greater than myself to let go. Because if I could, I'd let go of that resentment. If I could, I would uh, say, I no longer want to feel pain. And I've noticed that with 
a lot of people, it's natural to go, I'm fine and push it down and say that I, I'm not refeeling that hurt or that pain, but really it creeps up. And I always tell people one good check that you can use to see if you still have a resentment. If you keep telling the story, <laughs> mm. you might still have some pain and hurt in there at some level. You keep reliving it and say, I'm good, but you'd tell the story. Well, that might be a sign that you still have some hurt. Mm. Yeah. You know, like my, my Buddhist mind goes to that aspect of human condition, right? So a step, it might just be a baby step, but if I relate to somebody who has wronged me or somebody that I cannot forgive from that level of human condition, there's less of that separation of that person and me but if i look at it from a human condition that nobody's perfect you know mm -hmm. so like that that's also what i make out of what you said about spiritual surgery that oh yeah i cannot forgive this person but is it even about that person or like what are the internal suffering values you know what i hold on to and then like go deeper because pain can be a really good um fuel for spiritual mm -hmm. growth right so like when I'm having trouble forgiving, I can look into my own suffering that why is this action have so much power over me? So instead of looking at that person, I go internal. You know, what's in me that is letting this happen? For me to be disturbed, something needs to be disturbable, right? Mm. So like going to the causes of like, okay, why am I feeling this way? Then the release happen from the internal work, mm. not the external. Mm. Yeah, we can justify a lot, can't we? Hmm. Powerful stuff. Yeah. This might be a, a deep a deep uh, episode for a lot of our listeners in terms of resentments or pain that you might have. And one, if it's too much, shut it off and la laugh at another episode elsewhere. But this is some powerful work that can lead to healing and spirituality of, of, I keep going to that spiritual, that, that soul wound that some of us have in terms of pain and hurt that can be really freeing. And, and you, you really highlighted the, even with the justifiable resentments, there's internal work to do. Cause if we can't control another person, we might hope that the justice system will do its part. <laughs> uh, but the, once again, this is not a reconciliation. This isn't a right to a justice. We're not minimizing or condoning. We're freeing ourselves from the pain and hurt as opposed to needing someone else to do that for us. So it's that internal work that we're really talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're responsible for our own happiness. So let me give you some more whys. Why should we forgive? If we don't, resentment. And we know that can be a leading cause of substance use and relapse for a lot of people because they refeel a discomfort. And one way to deal with that discomfort is to numb out with drugs and alcohol. So that's a big thing with people's recovery. Yes, is putting down a drink or drug, but one reason why relapses are so high is because the refeeling of discomfort comes up and, well, can get sober to feel this way. So people relapse um, and people cope by numbing out. Um, why else should we forgive? If you're religious, the God's word tells us, forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us. That's mm -hmm. a big one for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So if you're a, a religious in that way, another reason is uh, when we forgive, we make our world less violent. I think about those ladies who say, we forgive you. And that has as much, that has a lot of power. Mm -hmm emotional power, uh, tangible power. It did with me. It, it, it stuck with me of, wow, if they can forgive <laughs> a lot of my, my small petty stuff seems like, uh, uh, pretty minimal. I often tell people who are just in it and are just angry and, and are hurt. And they're almost yelling at me about a spouse or a loved one in session. And I listen to them and I empathize with them and I ask them, when you're on your deathbed, are you going to remember this? And they, they look at me like that and it kind of puts it in perspective for them of, yes, this is my world and this hurts so much right now, but why am I 
consumed with this pain and hurt and, and wanting that person to make it right and get rid of my hurt. When, like you said, it's this internal journey that, that can really help us. Mm. So it makes our world less violent. A big reason why I think we should uh, forgive is so we can stop being the victim. Mm. Do you know, I don't know about you, but I think we can all relate to people in our world that are, are okay being in that role. They're okay being the victim. It does something for them. That martyr syndrome, if you will. Mm. That, man, that's a lot of work to stay in the, I call it the case of the me's, the eyes, the why's, and the woe is me's. It's mm. the, it's the, not the one upper, but the one downers. It's the, the people that are the victims. And man, we, we, we talk a lot about putting good in the world with right speech it was an episode we talked about. And that, that importance of that energy of good is, an, is important. And we can, I say this frequently, we have faith. We can have faith on the problem or faith on the solution, faith on positivity, faith on negativity. Faith in darkness, faith in light, faith in hurt, faith in healing, and putting that energy towards the light, the healing, the positivity, the solution is going to set up wonderful conditions for serenity and the opposite of hurt and pain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as I'm listening, it makes me think of like how courageous of an action is to forgive. As you were talking about that, um, the benefit of being forgiving is less violence, you know? Is that one of the things that you mentioned? Yep. Like, I immediately think of this imagery of like fire, fighting against fire is never ending. Mm -hmm. Fire, 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 back and forth. But the only way to stop or the wise and the courageous thing is to replace that with water, you know, to yeah. respond to fire with water. It's a better energy source. Yeah. Yeah. And once again, it's important to highlight because we, we, we confuse it. It's not condoning, it's not minimizing, it's not excusing. It's putting good and water and health on top of the, the hurt, negativity, and the weeds of life, if you will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. I also say this, why, why should we forgive? Normally, people hurt us because they are weak, immature, spiritually blind, wounded, or imperfect, not because they are evil. Mm. Yeah, that is related to what I wanted to talk about in the beginning, about the difference between the action and the actor, yeah. that if somebody has done something to me, if I don't forgive, I'm actually attaching that action to that person, that I'm not giving that person a chance, that he's going to be like that forever. But I can draw the line between that action cannot be repeated, but I forgive this person who has taken it because a person is always evolving based on, the, based on where he's at. And that I'm also giving an opportunity for more growth. So it's only it's not fair not to forgive the person. Oh, you are such a bad person and I'll never forgive, as opposed to what you did was very wrong and I don't forgive that. Yeah. I'll give a story of someone near and dear to my heart, but they'll and remain anonymous. And this individual when he was a, a young child was physically abused by his alcoholic military father and he was physically abused and physically abused and eventually this guy got big enough and old enough and his dad came and was getting ready to to hit his his mom and and he he jumped his father and tackled him to the ground and he said if you ever touch my mom again i'll kill you and he knew that he was finally big enough but he better get out so he left the house uh, didn't go back and he, he became an alcoholic himself and, and got to the point of almost suicide. Um, he eventually got sober. And, and one of the things that he certainly worked on was the pain and resentment he had towards his father. And he did a lot of work and, and healing that wound and letting go of the hurt. And he had X amount of years sober, I don't know, five, six, seven, I think it was seven years sober. And he was hiking up this mountain and he was whistling and he realized he was whistling one of his, his father's favorite songs. His father was a military man, man of faith, and he was in the choir and this was one of the, his dad's favorite songs. And he was like, wow, that's weird. I'm whistling one of my 
dad's favorite songs. And his dad is long now past at this point and mm-hmm. in a sobriety. And he's going up this mountain 10, 15 minutes further. And, and then uh, he goes around this, this bend of the mountain. He says, Hey dad, look, it's your favorite flower. And then it hit him and it was wild. And for the first time in his life, he felt like his father, who was a drunk, who was a, probably had a lot of trauma in his life. And he felt that his father was experiencing sobriety through him. And for the first time in his life, he let go of even more hurt that he saw in his father. He realized his father was a sick man, being an alcoholic, going through a lot of trauma. But it was a spiritual experience for him where he hurt, tackled his father, wanted to kill his father, ran away, didn't see his father again. And he got to this point in his his sobriety and his spiritual journey that because he felt the way his father was experiencing sobriety through him, more of the hurt was gone. And he looked back on some of the trauma that he had in a completely different way. It changed how it, he remembered it. And that was just pretty profound and powerful for me to to see the change. Mm. Yeah, the narration changed. Completely. Like you mentioned, yeah. Completely. So we can stop being the victim. A few things to uh, to remember. Before we forgive, we have to name the hurt. It's hard to forgive if we can't identify what the hurt is. That's really important. we got to talk about it appropriately, whether it's journal, whether it's sponsor for people in recovery, whether it's a support group, friends, um, therapy, <laughs> uh, spiritual journey. Those are all ways to, to go through this. Sometimes we don't forgive others because we have not forgiven ourselves. That's a big one. I always tell people that uh, with guilt and shame, no, often no jail cell can punish us more than we punish ourselves. Mm-hmm. So I might be able to forgive other people, but one of the hardest things it can do is to forgive ourselves. And with that guilt and shame, I've seen a lot of people in the therapeutic setting that, gosh, how do we forgive ourselves through this 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 healing process? Because we're, we might not be proud of things that we've we've done. Uh, to ourselves or to other people and we punish ourselves with guilt and shame so identifying the hurt's a big one Um, sometimes whether it's spiritual or religious some people need God's grace to let go of the big stuff but I'd also say the small stuff too whether it's big or small um, the spiritual journey can be an important one for this thing other things to remember sometimes we don't want to let go because our hurt makes us feel superior or special. Mm. It can feel like a control thing. I, I rather feel anger than hurt and, and other forms of resentment and pain. So mm. it can make us feel superior and we can ride that wave. And of course, some, some things, and I've highlighted this, some things need professional help. So get it. <laughs> yeah. Well, Good stuff. What's your thought about forgiveness is all? It's great. Really important topic. Uh, one of the very important people, yeah, very important person in my life always reminds me, it's not about you anymore, Zal. And I think I would find it offensive in the past. Like, yeah, of course it is about me. It's my life. But it's so freeing to know that, yeah, it's not about me anymore. But not at a place of like sacrificing myself. But it's just that why making a big, you know, like that, be not being able to forgive comes from the fact that like that the last point you mentioned about the victim, like the hurt, like I feel superior. I'm so special by holding on to it. But yeah, it goes back to that human condition too, that everybody goes through something similar at many different yeah. levels. So it's nothing special. Um, this is heart work. Hmm. If we are hurt, it affects our heart. It takes a lot of courage and different forms of strength in a way that a lot of us aren't connected to or familiar with when it comes to forgiving or letting go of a hurt. And that kind of goes back to, it can feel superior to hold on to a hurt and give us a sense of that anger can give us a sense of control or superiority. But man, what do they say about resentment is what, what do they say about the poison? Which one? Resentment, if I'm not mistaken, resentment is 
drinking poison. Oh yeah, and then one day expecting other, the other yeah, person yeah. to get sick from it or, or some version. I butchered it, but yeah, mm-hmm. resentment is drinking poison, hoping and expecting the other one to get sick. Yeah, and it's toxic. Yeah, one of the prayers that I like, I think it's actually a poem about uh, it's better to forgive than to be forgiven. You know, mm-hmm. I like that a lot too because um, one of the Buddhist recovery program that I um, am involved in, uh, there's a lot of like forgiveness meditation in there. And one of them is to ask for forgiveness. And like when I use that wording of I ask for your forgiveness, even in meditation, like it breaks down the ego. Like for me to actually ask, can you forgive me? And it can be a very powerful experience to actually verbalize it or mentally say it. And which puts me in the other person's point of view mm. that I need to forgive. What if, you know, how much suffering there is and how much suffering to be released when that forgiveness is granted in a way, you know? Mm. So when I wholeheartedly, I ask for your forgiveness, even if it's like a self-forgiveness to myself that I need forgiveness and I ask you to forgive me. Mm. And when I wholeheartedly say it, it's so real, you know, it's in the heart. Yeah, it's powerful. This is uh, ultimately serenity-driven, freeing, cathartic, thing to do and one reason people go to therapy one reason people can get and stay sober one reason people are freed from suffering when when the act of forgiveness is given to ourselves so well i hope that was at least thought provoking (laughs) thanks for this uh fun conversation zoe yeah thank you so as always thank you everyone for listening to us and we uh, once again appreciate it and please subscribe comment review follow like if you think others would benefit from this podcast episode share with others as collectively we can find solutions to all things health and wellness my name is Luke Du Bois and this is Zoe and we'll catch you next time peace